Hi, my name is Darren. I'm a co-founder at Impool. Um, as you can see from the plain white slides I'm going to present to you, this is very simple, fast, quick um, training on growth-driven design um, to get you up and running as fast as possible. Um, I do recommend you watch the full 13 hours of training uh, by HubSpot um, and get that certification, but this will give you a very good grounding on that. Right, so today we're looking at the learn and result stage of continuous improvement. Um, so let's look at what happens in the learning stage. So in the learning stage, the goal is to gain an understanding of the users based on what we've implemented. So you have gone through the planning stage where you've identified what you want to do. You've gone through the build stage where you've actually built some functionality um, for your website or maybe it's, um, uh, you've, you've designed something for your marketing as an example. You're now going to keep this thing live, this experiment. We call everything experiments in the growth-driven design process. We're going to keep it live until we are confident in the results. Um, and, and the users have, have kind of shown us um, whether, what our, uh, whether our experiment is, has worked and we're going to keep it live, whether the experiment has not worked and we need to change it or roll back to what was there before. Once we're through the learning stage, we go into the results stage, and over here we want to record the measurements that were made. So, um, uh, in our in, in when we built our experiment and we planned our experiment, we would have identified how we're going to test to see if this experiment worked. So here we're going to record what were the actual results. We may have had some variations, maybe some A/B testing we did, and we want to include any results there um, so we can compare um, the the different results and decide what to do next. Um, you're then going to highlight what you have learned from the experiment. So why did this happen? And continue to ask why. So why did the person not visit the page? Why did they not click on the button? Why, why, why? Just keep on asking why. And if you keep on asking why, you should come to the, the reason, the actual reason why something did not work or did work. Um, did the users behave in the way you predicted? So you would have written an hypothesis statement for your experiment. Was that hypothesis statement correct? What did this teach us about a persona, the persona? Um, uh, was one set of individuals, so if you further break this, um, the, the persona down into uh, where they came from or the sources um, uh, that, that, like whether they came from social media or whether they came from organic traffic, um, what device they were using. Did anybody behave differently to somebody else? And how might this impact future ideas? So seeing the results of this experiment, does that give us ideas for other things that we can experiment on? Um, which then leads you to your record your future actions and recommendations. Maybe it is to do other experiments. Maybe it is to continue running this experiment because actually after looking at it, um, you did not spend long enough in the learn stage. Um, maybe you want to commit those changes so you make this experiment permanently live. It's no longer an experiment. It's now something that is live. Or maybe you want to roll back to what was there before because actually it did not work. Um, Remember that um, you may, uh, in, in, in part of your experiment, ex experimenting, you may decide to um, do something really, really simple um, that, uh, that then results in the full-scale thing being implemented afterwards. So, for example, you, you may want to test to see whether your clients would actually want to calculate their retirement uh, savings, as an example. So you create a button on your website that says click here to calculate the retirement savings. If there's a lot of people that click through that, through that to that button, you then um, uh, will then go and actually build the calculator. Up until that point, all you're going to do is say uh, calculator come in soon on that page as an example. So it's all about experimenting to test whether to do something um, uh, for, for, for a permanent uh, basis. This is just an example of a results canvas. So you've got what you predicted here, the actual results, and uh, and uh, what the actual was, and plus any any variations that you can put. Um, so there's the baseline um, uh, uh, and uh, and variations. You can also say what you learned, and um, you can also put in any kind of future actions and recommendations into this type of canvas. Um, right, so the next thing is to go and move on to the transfer stage. Um, so go head over to our YouTube channel and watch the video on the transfer stage of the continuous improvement cycle. Thank you.